Hi, my name is Michael Cullen for Film Sound Tutorials, and welcome back to another video in my video series of a one-man workflow for post-film sound. And today, we're going to talk about compression, de-essing, side-chaining, and limiting for film. So like in the previous videos, let's start off with the dialogue track. So I'm going to go down to the bottom, down to my submasters, and mute all my other families by hitting mute. And let's go back to the top. So before adding our compressor plugin to our tracks, let me explain what we're trying to achieve by using a compressor. And so what a compressor does is that it normally limits the volume range or your dynamic range of the clips on your track, which means that it keeps the volume levels fairly consistent so the audience can better understand what's going on in the film. It also prevents the mix from being too loud in some moments in the film and too soft in others. This can especially happen when you record dialogue because because the actors will speak at different volumes depending on what's going on in a scene. So this is why we need compressors for our mix. So over here on the left into my inserts column, I'm going to add a compressor by going plugin dynamics. And then we're going to use the default Pro Tools compressor, which is the Dyna 3 compressor and limiter mono. And here it is. So let me talk about the different settings that you normally see in a compressor. So probably the most important setting is actually the threshold setting or the setting where the compressor actually starts to compress your audio volumes. So by default, this is set at negative 24 dB, which means when the level of your clips in your track reach above negative 24, then the compressor will start modifying the level of those clips. And so how much is it going to modify it by? Well, here we currently have a ratio of three decibels to one, which means that for every three decibels it goes above our threshold of negative 24 dB, it will compress it down to one decibel. And so if you look here at the grid, you can visually see those settings. So anything under negative 24 dB will be a linear one to one correlation. And then once it hits the threshold or the orange line, then you can see the slope of the decibels actually decreases by a three to one ratio. So then the next important setting is the attack setting. So how fast is the compressor listening to those change in volume? So if you have a low attack setting, like 10 milliseconds or even lower than that, then the compressor will work almost instantaneously on lowering the volume dictated in the ratio. So then if you increase the attack setting, then it will take longer for the compressor to actually start compressing the volume. So the next setting in a compressor is the release setting. So inversely to the attack, the release setting is how long it will take for the volume to stop being compressed. So similar thing, if it's a short release, then it will let it go back to its original volumes quicker. And on the opposite, if you have a long release, then it will take much longer to restore to its original volume. Then on the top left, we have the knee setting, which essentially controls how gradual the change is between the unaffected volume levels on the left side of the threshold versus the right side of the threshold. So if you up the knee, then you'll see the slope around the threshold mark will be a lot softer. So you only really use a knee if the compressor is changing the volumes very unnaturally. The last setting in the compressor is a gain setting. Again, normally I don't use a gain setting because we already did our gain staging during the pre-dubbing tutorial a couple videos ago. So that's the basics of a compressor. Now, since we added the compressor to a dialogue track, let's input the right settings for a vocal track. So the easiest way to go about this is actually to go to the preset menu and then go down to the vocal compressor preset. Okay, great. So according to Pro Tools, these are the settings that they recommend for a vocal compressor. And some of the settings I like and some of them I like to tweak a little bit. So first off, like I said, I don't like to use the gain setting, so I'm gonna turn this all the way down. Next off, I think their ratio is kind of low. I normally use about a three to one setting for vocals. And then the last thing, I think their threshold is way too low. And so I normally bump this up to about negative 15 to negative 10, somewhere around there. So with these general settings set, let's see how it's actually affecting the dialogue. So let's move the compressor over to the side and let's see what's going on. And remember, this is only on DX1, which will be Murphy's dialogue. No, no, look, baby, I need you. No. 
So just after that quick listen, we can see that it's reducing the gain of about negative 3 dB, which is about what we're looking for. So generally for vocal compression, you're looking for a gain reduction of about negative 3 to negative 6. Anything above that is going to start to sound unnatural. So with these settings in place, let's add this compressor to the rest of our dialogue tracks. I'm going to close this plugin and then I'm going to go over to the left and then hold Windows and Alt to duplicate and elevator the plugin onto the other tracks. Again, we don't need it on the X track. And actually, I'll just inactivate the X track since we're not going to hear any dialogue from that track and continue moving this on onto our ADR and to our group tracks. Great. So just to double check that these plugin settings are working correctly, I'm going to hold shift windows and then click on my first plugin DX1. Put that over here on the left. And then I'm going to hold shift windows on the second track and then pull that over here to the right. So normally you can't open up two instances of the same plugin within Pro Tools. So that's why we had to use that special keyboard shortcut. So DX1 is going to be Murphy's dialogue and then DX2 is going to be his wife's dialogue. And let's see how the compressors are working. What are you doing? Murphy, I think we should take a break. Are you kidding? I can't bring a baby into this house filled with your death. No, no, look, baby, I need you. No. Great. So as you can see, both of the compressors are reducing the dialogue from negative three to negative six. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So now generally, because we've already leveled out our dialogue in the pre-dubbing stage, I don't have to automate the settings of my compressor on a scene by scene basis. Now, of course, you could always automate the plugins like we did before by adding in all the different automation settings. But generally, I don't find that I need to do that. And if anything, I would only be modifying the threshold of the plugins themselves. So that's how you generally compress your onset dialogue. Now let's go down to our FUTS track. So here we are back on the FUTS track and the FUTS track clips are all the dialogue of Murphy talking through a bullhorn. And to make the bullhorn sound more realistic, the bullhorn is not going to have the same type of dynamic range as our normal dialogue clips. So over here on the FUTS 8 track, let me open up the compressor that we added. And for the bullhorn, we'll want to lower the threshold and then up the ratio to make it sound more realistic. So let's hear how that sounds like now. That could be a good thing, Craig, if you think about it. Give you some free time, pick up some hobbies. Uh... And as you can see that we now changed the dynamic range of the bullhorn pretty significantly, we'll have to go back to our volume automation and up the volume so that it hits our negative 20 on the RMS meter. Great, so that's what I would do for compression on the dialogue family. Generally for the effects family and the Foley family, I generally don't have to add much compression because again, these are already mixed to the volumes that I want them to be mixed. And if I added compression to them, then all I would be doing is lowering my dynamic range in my film. And since this is an action film, that's not necessarily what we want to do. For my background tracks, same thing. Backgrounds are fairly consistent by nature. And so we don't really need to add compression to the background tracks. And then down to the music tracks. Again, the music is already compressed when I receive it. So I generally don't need to add any compression to the individual music track. But again, if something is drawing too much attention or has too much dynamic range, then of course you could always put a compressor on the individual tracks. Great, so that's my fairly simple compression setup for my mix. Now let's talk about de-essing. So a de as his name implies, means that it removes all the S's from your clips, which is just a fancy way to say that it removes a lot of the frequencies from four to eight kilohertz. And as its name implies, generally you only use a de on vocal or dialogue clips. So anyway, here I am back on my dialogue tracks. And generally, if my dialogue already has too many S's or has too much high frequencies, I'd rather EQ that than adding a de -esser. But let me show you how to use a de anyway. So here back on DX1, I'm going to go back to my plugins, go to the dynamics, and then open up the default Pro Tools de which is Dyna3 de -esser. And here it is. 
So on first glance, it looks very similar to a compressor. So to hear it in action, let's add one of the presets from the preset library. And we added this to DX1, which is Murphy's dialogue. So let's add the male DS, and I only like to use it for the high frequencies. Great, so based on this preset, it will start removing frequencies around six kilohertz, and then it's going to remove it by a maximum of 12 dB. So let's see how that actually sounds in context. It's been stressful lately. So as you can see, when Murphy was saying words with S's in them, then the DSer sprung into action and started to remove those higher frequencies. And actually what's kind of cool with this plugin is that you can listen to actually what it removed. So if you click the listen button, it's then those are the frequencies that the plugin is removing from those clips. Just remember to unclick the listen button when you're done. So anyways, I generally agree with those settings. I think negative 12 is probably a little too much. So I normally like to do it around negative eight, negative six, because I think negative 12 sounds unnatural. It's been stressful lately. And there you go. So if you have actors in your film that say a lot of S's or are very sibilant, then adding a de-esser to your clips might help tame those high frequencies. But generally, like I said, I rather EQ than DS, so I'm gonna remove this plugin from my mix. Great, so the next thing that can actually save you some time during your mixing process is side chaining. So side chaining is the technique of lowering the volume of a specific track by how much volume is being made on a different track. So let me give you an example when side chaining would be useful. So let's go down to our submaster groups and unmute them all. And let's go back to the montage scene of Murphy failing multiple times and being reprimanded by his boss. It won't happen again. <laughs> You couldn't save one of them? All right, fourth time's the charm. Great, so as you can remember in the pre-dubbing tutorial, we manually lowered the levels of the music when the puppet, Murphy's boss, was talking, and then we raised back the volumes when the dialogue was complete. Now with side chaining, we can actually set that up to happen automatically. So first, let's go down to our submasters. So to refresh your memory from a couple videos ago, all the different families tracks end up being bus to the different submasters. So all the dialogues come into the dialogue submaster, sound effects to the effects, foley to the foley, backgrounds to the backgrounds, and music to the music submaster. And then after the submasters, they all go out to the master one stereo out. So if we wanted to set up some side chaining where the dialogue was removing volume from the music when the dialogue was playing, then we would set it up like this. So I'm gonna add a compressor to this music submaster down here on the bottom. And we'll just use the same compressor as before, the Dyna 3 compressor limiter. Now this compressor makes it very easy to side chain. So first off, you have to tell the compressor what's your input to set up the side chain. So that's represented here by the key. And like we said before, we wanna use the dialogue to lower the music. So since all the dialogue goes through the dialogue submaster, we can use the dialogue submaster as our key or our input. And since the dialogue is mostly mono, it doesn't matter which one we select. Next, we have to tell the compressor that we actually want to side chain using this input. And so to do that, you just click on the key right here and then it's set up. So then the last thing you have to do is actually tell it by how much you want to reduce the music volume. So in the presets library, there's a couple different options we can use. I'm just gonna go back to vocal compressor again and we'll lower the gain, up the threshold, up the ratio like before. And now let's actually see it in action. You couldn't save one of them? So, as you can see over here on the right, when the dialogue wasn't playing, then there was no gain reduction to the music track. And then when the dialogue started playing, then it started actually reducing the volume of the music. You couldn't save one of them? Great, so that's a great example of how you can use side compression 
in your film. Now, generally I would advocate for doing it using the volume automation levels first, but if you don't have much time, then side chain compression can really help level out your volumes. But again, I'm not gonna use this, so I'm gonna remove the insert. So last but not least, let's talk about using limiters for film. So a limiter is essentially the same thing as a compressor. So generally I'll use compressors on all the individual tracks, and then I will use limiters on the submaster tracks where I'm trying to limit the max volume of all the different families. So let's go back to our Dyna 3 compressor and limiter. And then instead of setting this up as a compressor, let's set this up as a limiter. So let's go back to the presets. And I like to use the gentle limiting preset. Great. So the difference here with the compressor versus the limiter is essentially the ratio. So here by the default setup, they have a ratio of 100 dB to one, which essentially means once your volume hits the threshold, it won't get any louder than that. Now for my limiters, I like to up the threshold up to negative two because that's normally what most of the film standards are. I'll turn down the gain since I don't need it. And then I'm going to make my attack very, very quick. Because again, what I'm trying to do is make sure the volume doesn't go past a certain volume level. And great, these are the settings that I like. So now let's close that plugin and then duplicate it onto all of our other submaster tracks. Great, so with the limiters in place, this will prevent my different families from peaking my master fader, which actually you can see down here on the bottom left that my master track was actually peaking previously because the two red lights are on. So to reset it, you can just click on the red lights. And great, this completes our tutorial about compression, de-essing, side chaining, and limiters. So make sure to save your session. And to recap, I use compressors on the dialogue channel to reduce the dynamic range of the dialogue so that it sounds a lot more consistent. And then I can use it on the other individual families on a case by case basis. Then I also can use a de-esser on the dialogue tracks if I feel like there's too much high frequencies in my clips. But again, you wanna use it fairly sparingly because if you overdo it, then it sounds unnatural. Then we showed how to use side chaining where we reduce the volume of the music submaster by depending on how loud the dialogue submaster was. And then we added limiters to all of our submasters to ensure that they don't peak our master track. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.